Oh, hello, folks. Well, we had quite a bit of excitement over at the Kingfish's house this week. And it all happened when the Kingfish jumped at the conclusions without making sure of the facts first. You'd think for a man that's been married to Sapphire as long as he has, he'd understand her and trust her. But he didn't. And I hope he's learned his lesson. Well, it all started innocent enough. Oh, Mrs. Stevens, I'm so glad I found you home. I just had to come downstairs to see you about something. Well, come on over and sit down. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Stevens. You know, I was just humming that song you play on your phonograph all the time. I didn't hear it today, though. Mrs. Stevens, I'll never play that song again. What? What's the matter, Marilyn? Daddy has refused to ever let me see Richard again. Really? Yes. Richard and I want to get married as soon as we finish high school. Daddy says I'm too young to even think of marriage. Well, well then maybe he has a point there. But I love Richard so completely with all my heart. Love him with every fiber of my being. Oh, but Marilyn. Oh, Mrs. Stevens, I'm sorry. I guess I shouldn't expect you to understand about love. You're married. <laughs> oh, but this is the price I have to pay for being a woman. <laughs> well, things are high all over now. <laughs> is there anything I can do for you? Oh, yes, Mrs. Stevens. The reason I came down here, this is my diary. I've been writing it in shorthand so Daddy wouldn't be able to read it if he found it. But now, the way he feels about Richard, I'm afraid if he does find it, he'll tear it up and throw it away. Mrs. Stevens, would you keep it for me in a safe place? I'll be glad to, Marilyn. I'll put it right in here. Up on the shelf. And if you don't mind, I'll be dropping in every once in a while to write in it. Well, that'll be fine, Marilyn. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. Flaming youth. Hello, George. Hello, Andy. Hello, honey. Me and Andy going up in the apartment. Andy, I ain't feeling so good. Must have been something yet. Oh, that's too bad, Andy. Oh, that ain't nothing much. Well, I'm going shopping. I'll see you later, George. Okay, honey. Come on, Andy, we see what we can do for you here. Well, Andy, we'll see if we can find some pills or something to make you feel a little better. But, Andy, what did you have for lunch today, anyway? Oh, regular meal. Some chop suey, meatloaf, some corned beef and cabbage, a hamburger, and a little spaghetti. Well, there, that could hurt you. Yeah, the only thing I can think of, Kingfish, I must have got poison on a rusty fork or something. Well, look at <laughs> I think your biggest trouble is that you are suffering from an unbalanced diet. There you is, loading in protein, carbon, hydrate, and you ain't getting enough calf to mine. Now, we're keeping the next medicine here in the closet here. Mmm, moth exterminator. You don't think you got any moths in your stomach, is you? Stuff, Andy. Take two or three of these. Uh, that ought to put out the fire. Yeah. Hmm. What's this? A diary. Hmm. Had it hit up there back in the medicine bottles. I didn't know Sapphire kept a diary. Maybe it's old when she had when she was in school or something. No, Andy. Uh, this year is all right. Uh, there's the date right there. I wonder why she hit it back up there. Holy smoke, she riding an Egyptian. Oh, no. <laughs> That's some what Sapphire learned when she was a secretary. Hmm, I wonder why Sapphire would keep a diary. Then on top of that, why did she write it in shorthand? Well, who knows? I used to go with a gal once and kept a diary. And every time she went out with a fella and something interesting happened, she'd come back home and read a few lines in the book. But she didn't give the thing up after she met me. Oh, she did, huh? 
Yeah, she done filled the book up the first day. <laughs> oh, shorthand. Amy, I don't like this. I remember the last mad woman that kept a diary with that case up in Boston. And they found her husband's body floating face down in the reservoir. Well, listen, Kingfish, that'll never happen to you. No, I guess not. You never get up to Boston. <laughs> Look, Andy, as Sapphire's husband, I got a right to know what's in this diary. I'm going to take it to a public stenographer and have her decode the thing for me. Come on, Andy. Yeah. Finishing up the last of them items there, ain't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Look like she hit something there. <laughs> something funny it happened when Sapphire was marketing, uh, probably at the butcher shop or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who is your butcher these days, Kingfish? I don't think the boy ain't never said nothing that funny. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. You to get out some money, Andy. triangle and it looked like I had a lot. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna put this diary back where I found it and let her keep writing in it. It's the only way I can track this thing down and find out what it's all about. Yeah, that's your only chance, all right. Andy, the one more thing. I don't want a word of this to get out to nobody. Oh, you can depend on me, Kingfish. Andy, you promise you won't say nothing? Listen, Kingfish, I is your friend. My lips are sealed. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Amos, I've been rebating in my mind whether to tell you something. It's a super secret. And I don't know where I ought to say nothing about it. Well, that's up to you, Andy. If you want to tell me, fine. If not, that's all right, too. Well, now, the man that told me this secret, then ask me not to say nothing about it, but I'm telling you in strictest conference. So when you tell somebody else, you tell them not to say nothing to nobody. <laughs> Look, Andy, maybe you'd better not tell me at all. Now, I can't use no names in this. Now, let's see how can I do this. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. There's a married man we'll call X. He's got a wife we'll call Z. Now, she's keeping a diary we'll call A. Now, the diary shows that she's in love with another man we'll call J. I'll be kidding, because I don't want nobody to know who I is, neither. <laughs> okay, Andy. Now, look. X is so because A shows that Z is in love with J. And K was witness to the whole thing. I was there when it happened. Andy, do you mean to tell me that the kingfish suspects Sapphire of going with another man, and you know all about it? <laughs> Maybe I should use different letters. <laughs> Oh, hi, Kingfish. What's the latest bulletin in the diary? Why, Andy? Oh, it's all right, Kingfish. Amos done broke the code. Andy, I thought I told you to keep your big mouth shut. Well, I know. Boys, this is getting worse all the time. <laughs> A few moments ago, when I left the apartment, Sapphire was singing some song. Boy, tell me what is this thing, anyhow. 
da 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 It ain't Yankee Doodle. Uh, it's love will come back to me, King Grace. But what's the latest thing Greenboat done put in the diary? Boys, uh, listen to this. Today at 3 o'clock, my darling Richard is going to call me on the telephone from the corner drugstore. So near and yet so far. I must tell him of my final decision. Say, this is serious, Kingfish. Well, Enos, at least I'm going to see what my competition is. Andy, me and you are going to be at that drugstore at 3 o'clock and get to the bottom of this thing. Okay, Kingfish. I can't believe she'd do a thing like this. But I guess Sapphire feels that by falling in love again, she can recapture her youth. I don't know, Emma. It's going to be pretty hard to capture anything that got away that long ago. <laughs> well, Andy, here at the telephone, they're going to make the phone call from. We ought to be able to hear everything from here. Yeah, we got to catch every word, because this is when Sapphire's going to make her decision, whatever it is. Hey, buddy, there's no spoon. Oh, sorry. Now, uh, what do you have? Uh, nothing. We're just going to wait for a phone call. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't wait for a phone call without a spoon. Oh. Maybe that's him, Kingfish, and he's just getting changed. Well, we'll know in a second. He's a good-looking guy, too, ain't he? Yeah. I thought sure that was him. Yeah. Well, you ain't gonna have to wait much longer. No, I don't guess it'll be too long now. Crawl out from under a jukebox. Carter, could I have change for a quarter, please? Why, certainly, Richard. Thanks. Got to call Mira, then. Well, here comes Donald Duck again. See, kid, uh, don't use that phone. We expect somebody to make an important phone call. Well, this is a public phone. My dime's as good as the next fellow's. Look, kid. I don't want no trouble from you. Don't use that phone. A phone is a public utility, and I'm one of the public. Oh, you is, huh? Yeah, and I have my rights. Okay, but make it snappy. <laughs> Hi, honey. This is a big moment in your diary. Richard, I really missed you. Yeah. I really missed you, Dreamboat. If you were a Dreamboat, Andy, that's my rival. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe you could buy him off with a bag of marbles or something. Are you serious about that? You really mean it? Well, say, whose diamond is this anyway? Uh, pardon me. Oh, nothing, Dreamboat. Now, will you please tell me again what you said before? I can't believe it. Come on, let's go off the stool here. Can anyone else feel the earthquake? What? Oh, he's all right now. Oh, somewhere around 80 or 90. <laughs> 80 or 90. Yeah, if he ever knowed how old Sapphire was, he'd fall on the floor. Okay, now, tell me again, Dreamboat. Richard, a love such as ours happens only once in a lifetime. And we must not let anything stand in our way. We've got to get married this afternoon. Well, Dreamboat, I can't this afternoon. We've got to track me, Miss Jefferson. Well, do you really think we should? After all, I'm awfully young. All right, if you think so, tomorrow then. 
It'll be better then anyway, because that's the day I get my allowance. And hear that, Andy? Whatever Dave's up to, she ain't going through with it till he get his allowance. Yeah, I guess this time she's looking for a man with an income. <laughs> okay, it's definite for tomorrow. Bye, dreamboat. understand how Sapphire would do a thing like that. Well, you know how it is, Kingfish. A lot of these older women get interested in flaming youth. Flaming youth? Why, he ain't even a flicker yet. <laughs> the only thing I can do, wait for tomorrow's entry in the diary. Ooh. the way the kid walks. Looks to me like the kid's half full. Oh, the kid had a rough day yesterday. The thing I can't figure out is how Sapphire could be interested in a young kid like that. <laughs> oh, that's all. She's a pretty smart woman, you know. Yeah. But what's even harder to figure out is why a kid like that would be interested in a woman the age Sapphire is. <laughs> Maybe the kid's out scouting for his father. Oh. <laughs> Boys, oh, this is terrible. I just had the day's entry in the diary translated. Sapphire and the kid going to get married. Married? <laughs> now, take it easy, Kingfish. Sapphire's already married to you. I know, Amos, but she's probably breaking up. Probably gone but jerk or something. You know, for a while, I thought this was all a joke. But now this really sounds serious. Yeah. Uh, what you gonna do, Kingfish? Beat your sapphire? No, Andy. I going right to the source of the trouble. I gonna see this fella Richard. I found out from the owner of the drugstore that he go up here to Sutton High School. Uh, and you going right up there, huh? I going up there and meet him face to face and really have it out with him. <laughs> Hello, Father. This is Marilyn. You don't have to worry about Richard and me keeping company anymore. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, Marilyn. Do you really mean it? Yes, Father, I really mean it. Because we're getting married. What? Marilyn, Marilyn, you can't, you can't. Hello, Marilyn, hello. Hello, Mrs. Stevens. This is Marilyn. Mrs. Stevens, would you do me a favor and tear up my diary? The diary? Well, is it all over, Marilyn? Yes, Mrs. Stevens. Richard and I are going to write the final chapter. The final chapter? I wonder what she means by that. You're getting too much arch in your back of the stock. Gosh, I can't seem to get it right. Now, just take it easy. The coach wouldn't have sent me in here with you if you didn't think you could do it. Well, I'll do the best I can. You see, something real important is going to happen to me this afternoon. I've got a lot on my mind. Yeah, well, start paying attention now. Let's try it again. Go. Start your regular exercise. Something I can do for you, mister? I'm looking for a Richard Whitaker. They told me I could find him down here. Well, the rules of the school are the students can't have visitors until after 3 o'clock. Well, is he down here? What does he look like anyway? Uh, that's him there. So that's going to marry my daughter? Come again, mister? He's going to elope with my daughter. He's going to... Marry your daughter? Yes. What a little rascal. You've been sneaking over to the girls' playground. <laughs> Say, this is a lot more serious than you think. I want to see him right now. Well, it's a quarter to three. You'll have to wait 15 minutes. Orders of the school. Uh, you can sit right over there.
How am I doing? Pretty good, from what I understand. Uh, let's try that start again. Huh? Go. <laughs> Where are you going, mister? You're not allowed in here. Get out of my way, mister. I gotta talk to that boy. Ain't nobody talking to nobody around here till school's out. Coach's orders. I gotta talk to that boy. But you can't do it unless it's absolutely important. Well, that boy is running off with my wife. Is that important? Yeah, well, uh... Come again, mister? That boy ain't loping with my wife. Well, I knew I had some hot shots in his class, but that one's a real sleeper. <laughs> oh, what are you doing there? You got a stomachache or something? <laughs> He's doing a lot more running than I thought he was. Mister, please let me talk to him. I gotta stop it. I'm sorry, mister. Whatever your personal problem is, it don't belong here during school hours. So you'll have to wait over there till school's out. Okay, little beaver, on your feet. <laughs> Look at him there with the big letter S on his shirt. And I know what he got it for, too, smooching. <laughs> going to be something to see. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? I want to see that boy Richard over there. You too? <laughs> well, you just have to wait. There's two weddings ahead of you. But this is important. Well, how was my little cradle snatcher today? Cradle snatcher? Look, George, what are you doing down here anyway? I come down here to stop a wedding. Stop a wedding? What have you got to do with it? You keep out of this. I just want to get my hands on that boy. I'll show him something. Listen, I was here first, and I get first crack at him, and I'm not waiting any longer. <laughs> Nobody laying a hand on that boy till 3 o'clock. Me tell you? Suppose you tell me. Yes, I'd like to know too. That boy's going to run away with my daughter. You must be Marilyn's father. Marilyn? Who's Marilyn? Well, what you complaining about? I don't know who nobody is. <laughs> nobody can make heads or tails of this. Now, let's be sensible. Now then, Mr. Jackson, what is it you wanted to say? I came down here to break up the marriage between my daughter and that up there. Well, I found out from a diary Marilyn was keeping in my apartment that she was planning on getting married, and I came down to break it up, too. Now then, George, what was it you had to say? Well, uh, the same thing I said when I was in the third grade. The sooner I get out of this school, the better. Come on. <laughs> and there we were, me and Sapphire, and the girl's father, and the coach. We were all standing there. And there was Richard hanging up there like a dried kibber. Well, Kingfish, did you ever tell Sapphire that you thought it was her in the diary? No, boys, I fumbled out of that one. But the thing that I can't understand is why I was silly enough to think that was Sapphire. Well, not as silly as you think, Kingfish. I can understand the woman being attracted by the younger sin. Yeah, after all, look at you, Kingfish. You was a lot different than when Sapphire married you. Andy, I think you got a point there. Yeah, the women is always trying to stay young to keep their husbands interested. You know, I don't guess it'd be a bad idea for men to do the same thing. Amos, I think you got something there. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> yes, Clara George is fine. As a matter of fact, he got up early this morning, and I don't know where he is now. <laughs> yes. Well... Oh, I hear his key in the door now. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Hello, Jeff. 